Namaste to all of you. And uh, thank you so much, um, uh, Art a Culture Fest, which is hosted by Z, uh, ZTV. Thank you so much for giving me such a great platform to share a couple of things about uh, Indian classical dance and Mohini Atam in particular with my audience. Um, and Age se main English mein hi baat karungi kyunki humko Hindi zyada nahi malum. Aapko dikat hoga aur humko bhi dikat hoge. So I will continue in English and um, and my English is also very saral saral. It's sida sada. So koi problem nahi hoga. Thank you. Um, I think by uh, we have a topic called decoding Indian classical dance with specific um, relevance to uh, Mohiniyatta. Now, what is the meaning of decoding? Uh, decoding generally means making something more understandable or more intelligible. And uh, even if you look at uh, software parlance, you have syntax, you have codes, so uh, and you have encoding. So basically, what the dancer does through her performances is encode, and what the decoding really happens at your end. So today, I'm not going to get into a lot of um, a lot of technical um, jargons, but I would because considering the fact that the the audience sitting here are all also common people, I would like to speak the language of the common man. Um, now there are different ways in which the dancer can make her dance communicative, and why do, does she need to make it communicative? The fact that dance itself has a lot of symbols, it has a lot of codes and on various spheres. Now, there are four areas in which we have uh, we have symbols. For example, if you look at the, the movement of the dance itself, the movement of the dance defines what kind of art form it is. For example, if it is in Mohiniyattam, you have semicircular, circular, swaying movements. Now, this is the grammar of the art form that sets it apart from the rest of the styles. Now, this movement, we have something called um, words. Now we've defined, once the grammar is defined of an art form, then we come into the language as such. We come to the words. And usually words are represented very simply by hand gestural language. And every art form, the way the hand gestures are executed is also very dependent on the grammar. For example, if you have semicircular movements in Mohini Atom, then uh, we can also have the hand gestures according to that movement. For example, if I want to show a mountain, then I, or if I want to show everybody or all or plural. So this, this, that also happens in the uh, semicircular or, or the swaying movement. Now there's another, uh, th there's another technique very simply that we use, which is that of the emotion or the face and the face um, the, the intervention of the face in Indian classical dance, I would say, makes it extremely intelligible um, because the face can't lie, right? So when compared to the other art forms of East or the West, when you talk about Indian classical dance, our face is so profound, the eyes are so profound. Um, and it's very easy. Now, if I want to show uh, the, if I want to say a boy, then I, this is a boy. Now, if I were to this show like this, this is not, this boy belongs to somebody else, or I am so detached with this boy. If I were to look at the boy with a lot of, lot of vatsalya, that vatsalya defines my emotion to the boy. The face can also be sarcastic. If I, if I say, that means that's a not, naughty boy. So similarly with other things also, for example, um, unless you want to show uh, for love, unless you want to show, Nobody does that for love. But in case they do, it also means there's, a, there's anger in love or there's frustration in love. Or nobody can show ang anger as you can, unless you want to show that you're sarcastic. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you came or, or, or you really called me. You know, stuff like that. So this, this is entirely the artist's discretion to use the face and to define the emotion. Another code that we have is the dress itself, the aharya. And usually for solo dance forms, we have a set, um, we have a set kind of costume. Um, it's already predetermined. Um, and uh, unless you are representing characters, if I'm Rama, I can get dressed up as Rama, 
or I can use some motive that denotes him. But usually for solo art forms, since the body and the mind is creating spaces, is creating characters, the relevance of a costume which defines this event is less. We have predetermined costume. Now, talking about uh, decoding, there are two phases in which one comes with the aspect of decoding. One is during practice. One is during training. That is, when I say practice, one is during the whole process of uh, imbibing or learning this art form from a guru. And there, what happens are these are common codes. So Mohaniyatam has a common code. Um, it is uh, the common code of Mohaniyatam is also that it has to exude uh, grace. Um, it has even the content. Um, it can be anything that relates to uh, the longing of the soul. Uh, it is bhakti oriented, uh, the longing of the woman for her man or vice versa. Um, so all this is to be done in this very, very beautiful, graceful manner with this grammar that defines Mohaniyata. Now, this is what is being given to us from our teachers and that we learn. Now, these are parameters. And I always feel that parameters are very important because if you're going to unlearn or extend, you, your parameters better be strong. The next phase that an artist uses to codify her own dance is when she starts creating on her own. Now, what she can do is using these very parameters that she learned, she can again make her own or create new themes, or she can extend these parameters according to the way she thinks it's fit. She can determine her content. She can determine the kind of gestures she may use. Now, I'll give you a small example. Now, if this is, take the, the hasta that, that denotes, hasta means hand gestural language, that denotes a day. Now, this is the hasta that we use to represent a day, one day. Now, how did that come about? So this is the sun. This is used to denote the sun. So the sun rises in all its glory. You can't show the sun like this. It's, it's a tired sun. So you have the sun rising it's all, in all its glory. It rises, the time taken for the sun to rise above your head, which is afternoon. This is the mudra for afternoon, and this is the setting sun. So this time that is taken for the sun to go through this routine becomes a day. So this is a day. Now, this is what is taught to us, the fact that this is a day. Now, how did this day happen is something that probably one deliberates upon and gives justification. Now, this whole thing, if I want, being a dancer, I would probably extend this, this hasta uh, to something like this. It can be again. So instead of just doing this, I would probably use all my emotion, the fact that the sun also sets and then also rises again. So this, I'm just giving you an example of how one can uh, maneuver, manipulate uh, your language depending on what you want to do. Now, when I say decoding is also making it intelligible, um, it is not just about making it intelligible. It also depends on who you're making it intelligible to. What is the kind of audience sitting there? Why do you want to make it intelligible? Or whether you really want to, want to make it understandable? Now, it, coming to the art of temple dancers, who probably dancers who've danced just in front of the Lord. Or if you ask me, if I want to dance something just for myself, I would not bother to make it very intelligible. It could probably be, it need be intelligible only to me. But the moment you have an audience in front and depends on what kind of audience you have, whether they are connoisseurs or whether they are common people or, um, or probably if they are students or if, they, if it's in an old age home, or whether it was the line of control that I performed in. Um, it all depends on who is the end user and what is it that you really want to communicate to your end user. Now, I don't want to go into a, a labor camp and, and dance the woman pining for her man there. It's going to go above their head. 
Instead, I would like to do something really concrete and something that that really connects with them. Now, that is the discre discretion that the dancer um, takes. My, my video that uh, my dance archival film that was voted into the contention list of the Oscars last year, Sarpatatvam. Now, why did, what was the purpose of taking that video? The purpose of taking, for me, the purpose of taking that video was more um, because I wanted to disengage myself from a particular emotion, um, from that particular creative uh, splurge in me at that point of time. I wanted to disengage myself from that and concretize it into a dance video. As you know, dance exists only in time, body, and space. So this whole um, attribute of or the variables of time, body, and space are very important, which is why I wouldn't dance right now, because this, I, what I can see is this whole distorted form of mine <laughs> on the camera. And I, being sensitive to an art form and being sensitive uh, to what I do, I would probably never dare to show something, show a performance of mine here, unless it's really you know it's really appropriate so um so sarka tatvam came out of that necessity uh, where i needed to separate that from this body and leave leave it there and that that was a work which commanded or which demanded that kind of a, um i would say that kind of a respect um because i wouldn't probably know that i would be able to do it again and again and again and uh, a recent uh, video of mine, which uh, which went uh, viral, was the uh, was the one on COVID nineteen. Of course, the ideation came from a friend of mine called Dr. Arun Aziz. And um, the whole thing, uh, the 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 reason that I listened to my friend was because I thought at this point of time it is very important uh, to address this to my audience, and. If you look at the video, you would find that there is stylization and there is um, realistic acting because Loka Dharmi. And you will find me uh, you know, wearing the mask or the gloves or uh, doing the hand wash. I can't be too stylized about it because the purpose of that was communicating or connecting with the common man. If I wanted to, I could have made it stylized in my own way, but I wouldn't do that because what is my purpose? My purpose here is to connect to the uh, to the people there and it's purely instructional. I wouldn't probably wear a lot of ornaments or I wouldn't probably look like a dancer. I really wanted to connect with the, with the common man. But I took uh, one of... Uh, uh, what do you say uh, of India's great philosophies on the Tapatraya, um, uh, the, the composition by Motuswami Dikshita, which was classical enough for me to include uh, all that I wanted into the into the spectrum of Indian classical dance. Now I see a question, and and I can't see actually. Let me put on my glasses. Um, has Mohini Atom evolved with time? If yes, how so? Of course, it has evolved with time. Um, and um, of course, the Mohini Atom of yesteryears, I've never seen. I mean, the, the first Mohini Atom, my memory of Mohini Atom starts with, uh, you know, great artists like Dr. Kanak Prale, Bhati Shivaji, um, Lila Ma, Kalamandalam Lila Ma, Shema, the teacher, all those, uh, all those people who, um, who tried to propagate the art form globally. Uh, they made a technique, they, um, they, they introduced new themes and new pieces. Um, some people uh, strove about making it indigenous and regional and sticking to the soil of Kerala. And uh, now it's more about self-expression. It's more about extending uh, the art form to, uh, to, to a space which is beyond uh, our own region, and to also fill in certain gaps that would be there. Again, that's the that's the perception of the artist. Um, so there could be gaps, and one tries to uh, one tries to fill that. I always feel that an art form is like uh, nurturing an art form is like nurturing a relationship because 
uh, in a relationship, you put in something that is not there, something that is already there. I don't think you need to really give much importance to it. But in a relationship, you put in, you contribute to something which is not there, you nourish it. And uh, similarly, in, in Mohini Atom, um, I feel that instead of just learning and doing and redoing mechanically, it comes to a point where uh, you have to address certain um, certain social issues, uh, or you have to at least, to begin with, you have to address your own emotion, your own self-expression, and you have to uh, at least do that in an art form. How does Mohini Atom speak about social topics relevant to the youth today, such as queer rights, body positivity, and so on. It's very tough. I don't think that Mohini Atom, um, in its, of course, in its own way, we have, um, we have people um, trying to bring about, uh, but it's very, very subtle. And I feel that even if you do, not many people really get to see it. Now, who is the audience of Mohini Atom? Most of us, I, I feel that most of us Indian classical dancers are a very secluded lot. We have our own musicians, we have our own um, audience, we have our own sabhas. And who are the people who come to these sabhas? They are people who want to see something that they have seen before. And any deviation from it could look off track. So even if you were to do, now even if you were to do something on cure rights or body positivity to a common man, how much are they going to understand unless they are previously acquainted with this kind of body dynamic? Um, it, it, I think I think it is time that we move beyond um, we move beyond the normal um, the normal set of parameters, and we have to ha be, make other people. It has to be more inclusive. Um, that way, then you have to even work on the lyrics. You have to have good musicians, uh, and you have to basically think out of the box. What can we do to propagate Indian classical dance forms better? I think the onus is on the organizers, not a question that is uh, that should be posed to a dancer. Of course, as dancers, we do have the responsibility of bringing our art form um, to the fore. And I feel most of the time when you have a common statement that uh, any audience would say is, um, no, I don't understand, I can't understand. Why do they feel they can't understand? So I realize the problem is not with them. The problem is with the artists. We need to really package our art form well. We need to speak, start speaking their language. Uh, we have to step a little um, away from just talking about bhakti. Um, well, that's there. But I think we need to have more um, social context like the naikas of today are not just these lovelorn naikas. They're not lovelorn anymore. You have divorcees, you have single mothers, you have widows. Um, we need to bring in their issues too. And that's the only way you can actually start connecting with the audience. What has been my fondest memory associated with Mohini Atum? Um, I think the shooting of Sarpatatvam um, was the was the fondest uh, memory that I have had of the art form. The fact that the art form um, did imbibe the the philosophy of a Dalit saint called Pambati Siddhar, um, and um, and the fact that I could use a lot of um, a lot of flow. Uh, flow movements. I changed the style. I changed the dance. I I used Tamil. I mean, I did whatever in my spite that would suit the content, without making an attempt to break the style. And uh, I was very unaware of. Um, I, I didn't occur to my mind that I need to, you know, dodge out of this, out of the normal Mohini Atom uh, routine. But I let the content dictate me. And uh, the very shooting of the, the whole dance archival film, the process, uh, I would say the, the whole process of it um, has been very, very uh, memorable. And one, and, I, and again, that uh, it was a mix, it was a, I had mixed feelings. It was not just fondness, there was a lot of fear, there was a lot of things going on. But one fond memory was when I did Chilapati Karam in, in the Kodungalur temple. Uh, which is the story of Kandagi. And um, 
Uh, and the last scene, uh, the last scene is just based uh, uh, on the interaction between Karnagi and and the king. And we had, um, and it was done purely with um, with Madhuram. Um, and what happened is after she she sets Madurai on on fire, um, uh, and then she comes back sitting as Kodungalud Devi. I remember one of the um, one of the people in Kodungalud, the the priests, I suppose, got um, the devis or the goddesses uh, Munda, uh, what we say her. Um, her drape and draped it on me. And uh, what he said was, we, we could feel a lot of heat, so we just wanted to cool you down. And because that dance also requires a lot of that kind of energy, you know, she sets the whole city ablaze. So for me, that was very, very, uh, that was a good uh, good memory of, um, of really internalizing the subject and communicating with my audience. Anything else? Um, another one now um, there's uh, there's a question on guru so um, see one thing about um, one thing about uh, your relationship with your art is the fact that um, when you contribute to your art, the art actually contributes back multifold. And that's on multiple layers also. So I would say the real guru is this, this, this aspirant in us or the, the intellect in us. And the real disciple is again this aspirant in us, which is why I always feel it's, uh, it's much more powerful to, to teach yourself or to, to learn or to nourish the art form um, within a span of time because there it's it's a communication between yourself as a teacher and yourself as a student you see another question how can one find the right balance between work and passion for dance that's a question i would like to ask somebody else um i i never balance i go off balance um so i guess um for me uh, not that i balance but i think the best thing to go about your passion is waking up early in the morning, um, uh, early in the morning and doing your riyas. Nothing like doing doing riyas because that really gives you um, the energy for the day and you feel very content and you feel very guiltless. Oh, we finished one hour, 30 minutes. Okay. What sets Mohaniyatam apart from other classical dance forms like Bharatanatyam or Kathak? Okay. All right. Uh, uh, um, see, for an outsider, now, if, if for an outsider, for a, for a non Indian who sees all these art forms without their costumes, <laughs> maybe in the sari, they'll think that everything looks the same. They'll probably say that Mohaniyatam is slower, uh, Mohaniyatam is more graceful um, it has its own pace and if the person were to see it more um, uh, closely he would probably say that it has a lot of facial expressions um, and it's softer gentler and if he sees it furthermore he would realize that it's uh, there's a there's this it's very contemplative and there's this great scope for characterization if Bharatanatyam or Kathak are on a faster pace here, the slowness of Mohaniyatam um, makes it potent uh, for characterization or entering into the into the uh, the mind of the character. Mm, and I also feel the 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 instruments and the rhythms are very different. Even for Bharatanatyam and Kathak, they are different. Mohaniyatam also, we have the ability to include. Um, uh, we have the opportunity to include uh, the, the the rhythms of Kerala into Mohaniyatam too. We can also have the typical um, uh, the Murdangam cholas also, but then we have this added advantage of uh, using this beautiful percussion. Um, then what else? Could you please do a little demo? Um, no, I, like I said, I'm very, if th this place is not uh, very congenial for a demo. If you would like to see a, 
uh, demo of mine, you can go to YouTube, Metal Devika, either go to Corona Video or Sarpa Tatwam. Um, for me, I told you I'm very sensitive to, to, to space. And if I stand up, you would not see most of my <laughs> body. If I sit and do, you would not see my hand. So I, I think I'm so sorry. What else? So um, I think our uh, session is almost done, maybe. So I wonder if I can sign off. OK. So um, this whole thing about Mohini Atom um, having somebody's asked, why, is it, why does it have so much of Srangara? Now, you have to define Srangara. Srangara, is, srangara can be uh, the, the passion you have for your lover, the passion you have for your work, the passion you have for the Almighty, the passion you have for your child. Um, and um, this has come out of a kind of socio-cultural context where the art form thrived uh, at a certain age um, uh, when it, there was more of this naika naika, na naika naika concept in it. And we've all had periods in history where every art form has its own phases of growth. And therefore, Mohini Atom, even if uh, there was resurrection that happened in Kerala Kalamandalam. We still had the Sringara aspect to it, at, uh, Sringara attached to it in great proportion. Um, but of course, now um, uh, now everything is very different. Uh, even the whole perspective of Sringara is very different. One can uh, one tries out other other themes as well. There are so many great dancers who are doing wonderful work, um, which is not just oriented in Sringara. Then uh, there was another uh, question about the Corona video. OK. Oh, well, um, this um, uh, when when Muthusami Dikshitar, I think I got those uh, lyrics from uh, a very uh, from Muthusami Dikshitar's composition on on Devi, on Mother Nature. And uh, he says that there are three kinds of, uh, like I said, the miseries were Adhyatmika, Adi Devika, and Adi Bhaudika. And um, uh, Adhyatmika is one that arises out of one's own mind. Adi Bhaudika is created by other people, and Adi Devika is created by nature. So, this apparently he has uh, taken it from the Maharoga chakra of this Kala chakra cycle, and he had adapted it into his composition and most of these people you see they they know a lot the truth is what they have always uh, sorted and if you look at all their compositions most of them have so much of truth in it and when you do something based when you do a content like this based on indian philosophy then there is there is so much of uh, depth in it somebody's asked me about my padam bhuyo bhuyo okay that that particular padam i had done around uh, i think 16 years ago yeah and every art form every dance of mine mostly is a kind of autobiography and huyo huyo was choreographed by me around 16 years ago and it's this uh, conversation between gopika and krishna uh, in twilight um, after they spend the night together and when he says you please go home and uh, she says i don't want to go home i want to spend the night with you and um, and then he says this, she says this forest is ferocious. He says the forest is ferocious. And she says, yeah, the forest is, forest is so beautiful yet. And my home is like the forest in your absence. And then he says, you need to leave if you have to get back to me. And that's your karma. Um, OK, where am I from? <laughs> Where do I look like I'm from? <laughs> OK, I'm from this little quaint uh, village called Palakkad, um, uh, Palakkad in Kerala. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very, very, uh, I, I, it's a place where there has been a lot of growth of Carnatic music. Uh, it's the great place of Kalpati, uh, where you have the famous cart festival, the Radhol Savam. And um, it, it's a heritage uh, village. And I'm so glad that I belong to Palakkad in Kerala. But right now, I'm based out of 
to Andrew. And I think a couple of questions. We are run, running short of time. Um, I'm so glad that I was able to talk to all of you. Um, and uh, uh, I uh, have a blessed uh, Ramadan. Have a have a blessed month of generosity. Be safe. Stay safe and be happy. Thank you so much. Namaste. <laughs>